So in this next video, we'll continue all the discussion on the human eye and entitle the next flowchart Human Eye 2. In the previous flowchart, we went through a broad overview of the human eye's anatomy, its structure, and how that's going to help us understand its physiology, its functions. Now we're going to get into the details of that physiology, of that function, uh, by understanding that the human eye will be very much involved in something known as sensory reception, that is receiving information, right? And then also sensory processing, that is taking information and interpreting it, understanding it, recognizing it. Think about what structures are going to do what in this reception processing event. Now, in the previous video, the sensory process video, we understood that there are four main components, four main chronological steps in any sort of sensation, in any sort of sense, whether it's seeing, whether it's smelling, whether it's tasting, touching, feeling, whatever it may be. And those are, number one, reception. And after reception, this is in chronological order, we need transduction. And upon getting transduction of that message, that sense, that signal, we need a transmission event. And then upon transmitting that information, that signal, whatever it may be, we need number four, finally, a perception of whatever started at the reception event. So these go in chronological order. This is how every sense works. doesn't matter what it is, including the sense of sight governed by and uh, mediated by the human eye. What I want to do in this video is go through the reception, transduction, transmission, and perception process by telling you that this is all going to occur during our pathway of seeing. Okay, So we'll go to and look at the pathway of, in quotes, seeing. And remember, seeing is sort of a loaded term because we always think the eye sees, right? But I sort of told you and hinted at that the eye doesn't really see, right? The eye just simply is a detection, a reception, a sensory mechanism, sensory structure that helps us detect light, detect an image, but the actual perception that we want to get to is done a little bit later by something else process, uh, by something else possibly. That's the idea of processing which we'll get to. So watch this pathway. As we go through this pathway, be sure to figure out what steps are reception, transduction, transmission, and perception. And if you want to brush up on these concepts, just look at the previous video. So in order for us to see an image, uh, we have to do step one, of course. Step one would be that light strikes the retina. Now this is an important step because this is going to be what starts the whole process. This is essentially reception, by the way. Light strikes retina, and the retina is critical here because I told you the retina, that innermost structure, contains two really important things when it comes to any sense, and that is the photoreceptors and the neurons. Those are going to be really important in helping us transfer this message, helping us represent and understand and receive and transduce and transmit this message. All of that is going to be very much governed at that retina structure. How so? Well, let's look at step two. Step two is only gonna, always going to be about uh, those photoreceptors I just alluded to. Photoreceptors, and we're going to actually label them now. They're actually called rods and cones. Rods and cones are located within the retina. These are the photoreceptors of the retina. More details on this uh, in a little bit later. They're going to get information. Photoreceptors get information. Okay, Because light strikes the retina, that light, that information is now going to be uh, taken in by the photoreceptors. They get information. And once they get information, they actually go down the line and pass that information on to the next possible structure that's important in the human eye. And that would actually be what are known as the bipolar cells. The bipolar cells now are going to get the information as well, whatever information we're trying to perceive. Bipolar cells get info. Okay. Now, once the bipolar cells get info, they're going to pass along the info as well to the optic nerve. The optic nerve now gets the information. Now, you must be thinking, well, this is definitely going to be now a critical step here, number four, because the optic nerve must relay that information to somebody, something, someone. What do you think that optic nerve has to send that information to? Of course, the optic nerve now in step five, in this pathway of seeing, is now going to directly connect itself, transmit the information to the central nervous system. What part of the central nervous system? Specifically the brain. This is what we mean by 
the idea of transmission, right? Sending that information to something that can actually perceive it. The central nervous system, specifically the brain now, gets the information. And now the central nervous system, specifically the brain, can do what? The brain can finally interpret, recognize, uh, understand what the image is. In other words, the brain, quote unquote, sees the image. Okay? This is how the sensory reception and processing event of the human eye occurs. This is the true pathway of seeing all throughout these six steps. So be able to recognize where we see one through four amongst these pathway steps of seeing. Now what I want to highlight a little bit further now, like I mentioned earlier, is this idea here, these photoreceptors, because they actually have a, a very, very specific mechanism. Uh, and it's a very cellular mechanism, so now we're going to uh, sort of deepen our scope. We're not just looking at the broad anatomy, we're now going deeper. We're going to look at the cellular level and how these photoreceptors work. So we're going to zoom in here at the photoreceptor level and just highlight a couple of other things. So these photoreceptors, like I mentioned before, are rods and cones. What are the cones? What is their job specifically within the retina? Now, they get information, but what do they do with that information? Cones are specifically going to be important because they're really good at detecting color. Cones detect color. Remember, color, cones, easy way to recognize what cones do. They detect color specifically when in the presence of light. Can you see the color of something if there's very little light? No. You need light, of course, there's that light, that is going to help you, as the cones, detect the color. So the cones are very much involved in color. We actually don't need to get into the physiological cellular details of this process. What we actually are going to look at is, or are, those rods. So let's look at the rods. Okay, so we have these rod cells. There's cone cells, rod cells. Both of them are photoreceptors within the retina. The rods are going to be really nicely summarized, their function, that is, the way that they work. Uh, in figure 50.19. So be sure to look at that as we walk through this. The rods have a specific job of not detecting color, but more so they're much better at detecting uh, black and white. So they detect black slash white. And this is usually actually going to be very much possible uh, at night uh, with low light. In low light scenarios, the rods are actually very good at detecting black and white. I think of them as helping us or ensuring that we have some sort of night vision capabilities. When we have low light scenarios, we're not totally blind, right? We just can't perceive color that well. But we still can perceive silhouettes of things, outlines of things. Uh, and that's because the rods have this capability of giving us some sort of essence of night vision. Now, how do they do this? This is where we want to get into the cellular mechanism. There's a step-by-step -step process highlighted in figure 50.19 that we'll go through briefly. Number one, let's say we have a light scenario, okay? Let's say there is light, let's say it's not night. Let's say it is light uh, and it's daytime. Light in the form of a photon, because that's how light travels, right? That's how the visible light spectrum works. It hits a protein or a uh, detection structure known as rhodopsin, okay? So rhodopsin helps and functions in rods. Easy to remember, rhodopsin rods, rhodopsin rods. Rhodopsin is just a very light sensitive pigment that's going to be specifically found within rods. They're light sensitive. They can detect light, in other words. So when light hits a light sensitive structure known as rhodopsin, step two occurs. And step two is rhodopsin goes from what is originally, normally an inactive form without the presence of light to an active form in the presence of light, in the detection of light. So we'll say rhodopsin is activated, in other words, once that photon hits that structure. What does that cause? That actually causes a really important cascade event, a really important transduction event, as shown in number two here. Specifically, this will initiate a really complex G protein. That's that, remember that signal transduction pathway. A G protein signal transduction pathway you don't need to know the details of what that pathway specifically is, aka who's turning on, who's turning off, what's activating, what's not, who's doing the activating, but just know that we're basically going to activate a very complex G protein signal transduction pathway. Only if the rhodopsin is activated, only if light hits the rhodopsin. Okay, 
So G protein signal transduction pathway occurs. This is actually nicely summarized uh, in figure 50.18 if you want to look at more of the details associated with that pathway. Okay, what does that do? Because now there's going to be a next step. We have to get to something like transmission or perception or something like that, right? So in step four, this is actually quite interesting. When this G protein signal transduction pathway activates, occurs within this rod cell, this actually closes sodium channels, okay? Na plus for sodium, these channels actually close. If you remember from our action potentials lecture, when we have an influx of sodium, when tons of sodium enters a cell, what does that sort of signal to us? That's a positive ion, lots of positive ions entering the cell, entering a neuron, entering whatever it may be, usually indicates that we're going to complete an action potential. We're getting more and more depolarized. We're getting towards that positive uh, 35 millivolt uh, spike in that action potential graph. But we're not doing that right now. We're actually closing the channels that initiate that, that cause that. Because we're closing the channels that would cause an action potential, we actually can sort of say that in this scenario of light hitting rhodopsin, we get no action potential. This is kind of weird, right? No action potential. Why would we want no action potential in this whole idea of seeing something? Just wait, hold on one second, all right? And then number five is actually we get the exact opposite of an action potential. The exact opposite of an action potential, aka the opposite of a depolarization event, depolarization opposite would be very much a hyperpolarization event. This is an inhibitory event. This is like an IPSP, in other words. Why are we doing this? Why aren't we activating things? Why are, why are things eventually, uh, the, why is the goal of this to deactivate, to turn off, to not have an action potential, hyperpolarization? Remember, rods work best at night. What is happening at night? At night, there's very little light, therefore we can detect black and white. What if it's the daytime? Daytime, there is light. That means light hits rhodopsin. That means rhodopsin is activated. That means this happens. That means this happens. That means this happens. So what would you say in the presence of light in terms of rods functioning? Rods don't really work that well in the presence of light. Their job is not to work in the presence of light. Their job is to turn on, to activate, to do and detect black and white when there's a lack of light. And I think this is a really silly way to think of this, but every time before I go to sleep, I'm serious, I really do this. When I turn off the lights before I go to sleep, I think in my head, rods activate. Now my night vision is turning on because now there's a lack of light. There's a low light scenario and environment. Therefore, I'm capable of seeing, at least understanding or somewhat seeing, somewhat perceiving the night area, the night vision. This is what allows you to walk to the bathroom at night without, you know, tripping over yourself. You still have a general idea of what's going on with a low light scenario because low light means rods are working. If there's a lot of light, hyperpolarization of rods, rods are not working, probably cones are doing their job. We don't need to get into the details of the cones. So that covers our look at sensory reception and processing. Again, this is absolutely unbelievable how quickly and how amazingly this works in those of us that have this capability of seeing and perceiving the world. Uh, and that's a really important way to close out this nice lecture on synapses and sensory processing.